basket, you are looking to kind of be okay. Ooh. A little bit of an OMG Shanji special coming in here just for me off the LPL, but a rumble in that top side. I mean, something like got buffed coming in on 13-5, right? Alongside Marcoon, but Shio is here, and you can see the Renata not too far off either, so maybe we're going to see some fireworks up on this top side. The Flame Splitter kind of pushing in Irrelevant, now going to get ghosted upon. He flashes away, he doesn't have his equalizer just yet. They flash in on top of him, Irrelevant needs one more auto, and he will get it. He hit level six, but it shall not save him. Now Shio knows that he is dead to rights. Two to one to SK. And this is a very... Very the two kills, but with all that pressure on the top side, it means the resets come in for BDS and they have got top, or excuse me, bot and mid lane still there. So we've seen now both supports kind of having themselves in unfortunate positions as both top laners now find themselves in a 1v1. The equalizer comes down as well as the overheat. The ignite's been ticking onto Adam. He's got some extra movement, but he's not got the damage. And that is the pound there, especially with the hex drinker for Adam. He's already planning to try and make a play happen, but now look on the bot side. Yeah, gonna see them now go for a 2v3. As Doss does get taken out, Crowny just perfectly set up there to throw in the rock. Sooner yeah. spells burnt, maybe SK can look for a pick beforehand. Oh, they're looking for one right now. There's the charm coming in. No Cyclone, remember, but you've got yourself a cease and desist. There's going to be the ultimates comboing in. They trade it back one for one. Good flash from Sir Good. Good chompers now, keeping SK at bay. You've got no rumble here. And you've got no engage for Marcoon, so BDS. No real commitment to come in here. There's going to be Shelly in the drop down, and that's only going to be plates towards Marcoon. There's Irrelevant and Adam trying to see if they can dodge each other out. There's going to be a little bit of damage. Oh my god, Irrelevant needs one more auto, and he's going to go down. Because yes, I don't think they're the best of front lines to try and take these fights. No, nope, they're going to look for one right now. No flash on Shio, but he has to use the cease and desist. There's going to be the hostile takeover doing just that. Marcoon can't read really get and finish off on the kill. Shio gets into the shield, and Sirtis goes golden, but it's only to delay the inevitable. Nuke comes in and does just that. And they tried to take the fight immediately, but you don't have extra kick in position, but now looking for one more. They're going to go right straight onto Labrov, who goes down. No bailout for him. That's just going to be a trade. Now you have the opportunity to, okay, we're going to push mid, move with Nuke down to bot lane, crack open that turret, get even more gold for Crowny, or even if you look, this combo goes end up coming off from SK, which is why they're playing so far back. Yeah, you're going to see the handshake come in. They get a knockback on Doss, but there's a good equalizer. Doss will still go down to the rocket. They're going to try and see if they can take out Shio on the backside as he's forced to flash away. The Unleashed Power is onto the clone. That was a great decoy, but they've run straight in onto Sirtis. He gets no chance, but they're putting down the feathers. The shutdown at the two for two. Exekick lets the feathers fly! Zap was almost exceptional, but it's a two for two in the end. You feel like BDS are still coming out that bit stronger. They just managed to eke away from the engage from SK. Oh, Marcoon. Here we go. Marcoon, you don't need to be there, and you will be shut down. Nuke picks up his second kill, and again, just small little differences in the di water making such... Rocketing themselves towards a two, three item spike. And BDS look comfortable. They're going to be the ones on Seoul now in five minutes' time. to see if they can try and bite back. At least the moment getting good wave control. You can see getting that top terror down just off of side lane minion control with Sarah shoving in that wave and BDS control. But this is really nice from BDS. I just think at the moment having Crowny in mid to shove that wave would help out just a little bit more. Continuing to just play off of two lanes. Make sure you're kind of soloing it off. I think SK are way too late to this party. This dragon is going to be secured. That's going to be Seoul. An infernal Seoul at just after. 24 minutes. Not actually able to pick up the gold or in these group situations. Labrov though. Labrov gets charmed, but the scan of the week is good. They're gonna pop down the ultimate onto Crowny, try and separate him out from the fight. Doss gets jumped on by Adam and he is dead. Marcoon can't make much else work, but he does get the Syndra now. The Jinx is getting excited. Crowny's on the hunt. They haven't found Sirtis, but Crowny has a feeling he's somewhere in their own jungle. You've got the 1v1 back in the top lane. And Adam asserts his dominance on this Olaf pick. And that's bad. cannot find the right angle. They just just feel a bit like nothing. It just feels like they don't do anything in the big team fights, and this Jinx is getting out of control. Well, you've lost a fair bit of summoners, but you've got yourself the exhaust and the barrier. Laprov does get caught by the Everfrost, but doesn't get hit by the charm. That's a little bit of a misplay there from Sirtis. You got to feel Rocket goes right between the points, or posts even, for three points. And SK, yeah, like you said, they're just going to have to try and put call for these, you know, side lanes because they haven't got the engage, they can't get on top of people, but they also can't cover all lanes at all times. And I think there was a basic call of like, hey, look, do we try and all in on bot side or do we try and all in on Adam? They try to go for bot and it's causing them now. As again, bot lane terror going to be taken. Yeah, that's going to be the base cracked open on the bot side. That's inhibitor number one. Almost certain to fall with it. They've got the minions in mid lane as well. Sir, just trying to use the orb of deception to see if he can maybe get rid of these minions, but... It's just so, so difficult right now. There's just not really a lot you can do as SK with this Baron buff still going. 
You just have to kind of sit there and watch. The streak seems to be continuing for us. You're looking for a, a miracle hook from DOS that kind of goes into a full wombo combo. Everything landing on top of Crowny, but uh, I'm gonna say Crowny's pretty decent. It's going to be shredded down by a lot of this damage. And speaking of damage, they're gonna look to try and get a support and jungle combination here on top of Relevant. He cannot trade back the kill on turrets and dry SK away. Charm lands, but got no not much else here for SK. Yep, you can see the hook just go wide as well. As you mentioned, Adam was escorting the minions into that mid lane to give himself an angle as well. They're gonna jump it on top of Marcoon. Good charm here on the Geo means he's gonna have to use his stopwatch. Oh. My god, that was a hell of a lot of damage, and it's not gonna stop either. Your feathers may fly, but you are being turned into KFC, my son. And that is going to be SK kind of rolling over as BDS continue how they left the regular split and looking just as good in game number one. And you can hear the French crowd here. Happy as Larry with BDS. That was a fantastic game. The path of stats yeah. in a negative <laughs> way as they now finish off the Nexus. Yeah, Crowley doesn't care. He got the win. Stats are just stats. And that is going to be a... Now you got the hop, you can slow, you can try and get that hyper to keep at bay. And I think this is actually just a good read from SK. The chances are BDS were going for the Darius. And I love the fact that when BDS are playing as well, the Darius gets locked in. It's not a surprise. There's we just nothing on the map for him to do. And I think this is kind of the big change that we see coming into this patch. It's Crowny actually. Yeah, they're going to see cleanse immediately. Doss does have to heal after the Ignite came down on top of them. Nothing else really happening, but Shio's kind of covering this right now, so Marcoon's gonna have to run away. Arctic Assault goes straight in on top of Exekick, who does have the cleanse available to him, uses it, but goes very, very low. Everyone holding on to their flash, no one wants to lose that big cooldown just yet. Yeah, and that's with Marcoon kind of in the area, that's with their jungler there to maybe go for some kind of a re-engage, but it's so quick, it's so, and it's again, back to the exact point you made a couple of minutes Utility ago. style build, irrelevant, gonna play relatively defensive, especially with the... Uh, oh, cleanse gets used there as Lebrov goes in with a handshake, but... You've got Nuke move roaming down here. They're gonna try and see if they can catch out Doss. He cannot flash away, and he gets taken out by Nuke. Access to that hostile takeover. You are looking to try and make moves here. Adam gonna pop the ghost, and you imagine he's gonna try and flash as well. As the blast goes, oh, he doesn't hit it. Can he get away? No, Nard back into the wall, and SK bring themselves back. Yeah, Marcoon actually snuck himself around the vision. Adam does not know the Monkey King is here. Relevant doesn't have Mega though, so this is kind of a, a hard one to really make work. They are going to jump in with the Cyclone. Adam taking a fair chunk of damage. He does have the stacks, but he does not have the time. And that's going to be a kill up on that top side. Sirtis tries to move down, does have the cleanse from the spell book. And keeps himself alive. Didn't use his flash or his spirit rush. Here's the hostile takeover. Doss flashing away. Not quite sure where LeBron was aiming that one. And ends up all kind of just being a couple of ultimate share, but here we go. We're going to see if they can get another little bit of a charm. Shio trying to run away. There's going to be the ultimates there from Crowny and, of course, from Nuke. They're not quite able to get an extra kick. Still alive underneath the table. Or excuse me, underneath the tower. They are getting themselves more and more kills. They got the turret on the top side as well. As you can see, Surt is trying to dance around these fights. Labra forced to flash. They away. want to try and fight for this dragon. That is the question. Marcoon is here, but he doesn't really have an entrance strategy, so he's just gonna have to give that they one up. kind of over eager to go for certain things, panicking a little bit. And surely just getting... Do they want to fully commit to this one here? The Dragon not going down exceptionally fast just yet. SK not got the Lulu, but they are kind of moving everyone in. Irrelevant goes into his Meganar form. They jump in, they're gonna try and catch Adam. That is Dragon Soul point now confirmed for BDS, but will, where will the fight go afterwards? Ultimates going left, right, and center. BDS on full retreat. Marcoon on the back side of this. The flash charm is good. Shio forced to flash his own. These are so many low health bars, and those chakrams are doing the damage. Not doing too badly himself either, so. SK definitely feeling a bit more momentum. It's a case of SK trying to see if they can bait BDS away from this position. Mid prior was so important. Oh, they land the ultimate. They put down Sirtis into a stasis because he's got the Miasma as well. There's a good hostile takeover to kind of reset. The feathers fly and they cut down Exekick. He had no way of reacting. The damage was insane. Crowny with great position on the feathers, even managing to move across with the Gale Force to get it. Now Adam goes. Adam gets in, gets himself two Two movements for his trouble. They're gonna have a relevant use as Meganar on the backside of this, but everyone is disengaging because that is a Mininar. He is just a child in a battlefield and he doesn't belong. There was no flank, there was no chance for SK. Beat Yashi, although just the better able to get out of there. I mean, Sturtis has nowhere to go, and you're in the Miasma! And that is why the Cassiopeia was banned in game number one. And that's why Grounded is a very fair and fun time to be <laughs> <laughs> BDS 
just now will get the soul for themselves. They will. SK find themselves in a bit where they have to go for this. They're looking for plays as a four man, but I don't know if they're going to be able to go for it. Actually, as a three man, as Exekick finally gets himself something, they get a four man knock up here with the Cyclone. Mark Hoon trying to see if he can maybe delay a little bit longer. There's going to be a good charm on the Geo, but Irrelevant's not mega right now. The flash over with the hostile takeover is decent and it separates everybody out. Double kill coming in from Crowny. And it does feel like we're at desperation stations here for SK. BDS are in total control. The timing window was so good for BDS. There was no ultimate on Exit Kick. He was counting down the seconds, holding the Infernum gun, because saying, please, buy me time before I can get the big AOE. But I just, again, it's just, it's kind of, you know, harking back to, you know, are BDS truly the number one team in, in the regular split? They, you know, were, they haven't panicked. And now BDS are getting to reap the rewards, pushing in on bot side. SK trying to see if they can find answers on the top end, but BDS, won't be stopped, gonna to continue to put the push forward. And even in your looking in the mid lane, potential for a dive onto Exit Kick here, but they're just gonna go for the inhibitor tower instead. Yep, you'll be able to trade this one back. I will say, Irrelevant should be able to get himself the turret here as well, as Adam has not even attempted to move towards him there, but... So it's actually not that bad of a trade, if I'm being totally honest, for SK. This is a good moment for them to kind of get a little bit of gold back from those gold bounties, they're not a million miles behind. If they can get that inhibitor, it would have been fantastic, but going straight into Meganara with new coming, definitely not the uh, position you want to be in there is irrelevant. No, oh, gonna see them catch out. Oh, Clans no. gets used, but he does get himself away. The feathers do fly, they drink it back, and Doss is dead. Crowny is just styling on them right now. He wants this series over and done with before he can even get to dinner. The TP coming in here for a nuke, gonna immediately set, set up for another terror to be taken here by BDS. Raccoon four set on top side means he's not here, and there's no defense that SK can really mount. Oh, SK, you gotta pray to whatever god you think is fair. Because right now there is no fairness in the world, there is just results and BDS are looking for the 2-0, a clean one and a decisive one at that. The crowd know what they want, this could be the final fight, the Miasma goes down, Irrelevant doesn't even get to go, Mega, you will stay a child, double kill for Nuke, exit kick, hasn't got the right guns, the Nexus turrets are falling, BDS cementing themselves in the LEC as one of the teams to beat as they will smack down on SK. They chose you for a reason because they knew they could get the result they wanted. And they chose... Played it. Um, so it's a P that might come back. It's a, he has a slightly advantage into Olaf matchup specifically. Uh, so that's why I assume he picked it. But um, team-wise, he has to go Ignite to win this matchup. And um, I think Olaf will do a bit more than Rumble. So he just, pick it, he just picks it to lane against me, as supposed to try to gain some advantage. But later on in, in the game, I don't think it has much value. That's why um, uh, his impact in the game, uh, especially on mid-game, was not that uh, impressive. So I, I don't mind playing against it, to be honest. Uh, you can pick whoever. If I ever love, I'm fine with that. And what about the Darius pick? Because I spoke to uh -huh. Swiffer, the coach of SK, going into the second game, and he said they hadn't prepped for you on it. They were kind of surprised that you picked it. Um, I, I was surprised as well that I picked it because it was kind of... I mean, it's like I shoot a bullet in my, in my feet, you know? He, Darius was not, um, uh, was not a good pick at all here, but uh, we had Sejuani, so I wanted to have still a bruiser on top lane because regarding uh, SK's team comp, I felt like even though it's not the best Darius angle, I will still find value in my pick later on. Uh, it's just I fell, uh, I fell behind in the game, which made my game even harder. Um, but uh, if the game didn't go like this, I'm pretty sure I would have a really decent impact. It was unfortunate in the end, but um, my bot lane uh, like made sure, you know, like my team carried me kind of this, uh, this best of. So um, I'm really happy that uh, I get to play with them right now. Well, I mean, the BDS bread and butter seems to be the split. You do your thing up top. Yes. The teams have to focus on you. Meanwhile, Crowley, he's farming. He's That's doing true. fine. That's true. I mean, I think we're a team that it's really hard like to understand us on what we really want to do clearly in the game because we can basically play whatever we want. We can play whoever, uh, wherever we want as well. We can decide to play topside for one game just suddenly like this. Uh, or we can also decide to play through mid or through bot. I mean, we can kind of do whatever they, uh, we want. So um, it's a really great advantage from us as well. Uh, my picks uh, makes uh, the thing harder, especially for enemy team, uh, because they know, oh, he has Olaf, there is said, you know, like this kind of picks that uh, usually people are not prepared against it. Uh, because not a lot of players play them, so I think we're in pretty. I think we're in control of what we're doing right now. So I'm pretty happy, I guess. Adam, what do you want though? Who do you want to play that we haven't seen yet? What do I want? Yeah. I, 
I mean, right now I would like to go to MSI. I think it's a pretty realistic um, uh, dream for the moment. Uh, so until we lose, I will still believe in it. And uh, I hope we make it. Shukwa. I believe. Thank you so much you. for talking to me, Adam. And also, I kind of want to see you guys go to MSI so I get to see what outfits you don for the walk-on. That's true. We are going to head to a short break, but up next, we're going to be finding out who BDA 